Good morning, everybody. All right, we got uh, we got some big plans today. I did the uh, the rough fitting for this this skylight. The feel in here already looks outstanding. And I didn't plan on doing this yesterday, but I'm extremely pleased, very very happy with this black brushed aluminum peel and stick backsplash that I picked up. When I first opened it, I wasn't completely sure about it because I was like, man, it's on Amazon stuff. They're so good at taking pictures of things. And it almost never looks exactly the same in person as it does in the photo. So I unboxed it and I was like, damn, the, the texture and the color looked really flat. So I was like, man, this is just going to look like paint almost. But you can see behind me, once I put it on a wall, it helps that the wall is a little bit curved. But once I put it up, man, I fell in love with it. It looks outstanding. Very, very happy with how it's tying all this together. My uh, my brother's neighbor, Justin, happened to have a uh, leftover butcher block, which, man, is huge. <laughs> butcher block is not cheap. My plan is to take this over to my buddy's place who's building out his own workshop, but he actually has a table saw, which is a luxury in my world. Break this thing down cut it in strips, and then cut it top to bottom for the dimensions that I need, put it on the countertop, and uh, and call it a win. All right, fam, the van started, I'm very happy about that. And I showed up at my buddy Mark's place, and he has, he is building the ultimate woodworking shop. It's uh, it's under construction, but the vision is there. There's the, uh, the butcher block, and the plan is to kind of essentially just like cut it into a couple smaller strips and then piece it back together to full proper kitchen countertop. Alright guys, Master Carpenter Mark had uh, some, some better construction ideas than uh, than I had. I'm just extremely, really pumped to uh, to actually have a butcher block countertop in the making. It's gonna look awesome. One more shout out. One more shout out. One comment. Drop a comment for uh, for Mark's garage that he's uh, that he's building. Is this normal? <laughs> is this normal? Is that right? Hey, comment below. Is that normal? It's not. Alright guys, looks like we are able to uh we're able to make it work. Basically what we did is we just took the big piece of butcher block and we ripped it down to two and a half inch lengths and then flipped it and then cut those in half. Right now I'm gonna finish um, kind of dry fitting this and, and getting the dimension so that way I can cut to fit and get this thing going. <laughs> All right, Mark. <laughs> so there's, so there's, what, there's, to, what, what do we do first? First of all, we try to, we try to put these things together with regular glue. I showed you guys in the pocket holes didn't work. So Mark, busted out the good stuff right like how good is how good is this glue this is what can you expect from this glue well th <laughs> this stuff is going to stick to everything you know and david even mentioned that you know did you put anything underneath it and i said no we should be okay so I'm not worried about it so now as you can plainly fucking see it is glued to the table because i didn't put anything underneath it <laughs> this is really, really good glue. Oh, shit. So, so, <laughs> so long story short, um, part of the butcher block is stuck on a work table. Um, at least the vices aren't stuck. But we're gonna, he's, he's chiseling it, uh, chisel, chiseling, trying to wedge it up and hopefully, um, hopefully keep the, uh, oh, winning. Winning. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you I can't guys believe you did that. <laughs> have ever seen this glue. <laughs> wait, wait, let's show the people. Wait, don't glue that to the table. Despite the little mishap, uh, it worked out. This glue is beyond impressive. Like I'm holding just one of the boards right now. It's set for what, 30 minutes maybe? 
there, give or take 30, 35 minutes maybe. Um, and it's, this is four pieces of wood together. Together again at last for the first time ever. Looking good, bro. Woo! Oh, damn. Damn, bro. Killing the game. All right, fam. Um, we're about to go get a workout real quick, get some grub, and then finish this butcher block. All right, guys, it's getting a little more real, and we're getting a little more better with working these uh, this clamp system. So we got the two bigger pieces that we just planed and uh, and and uh, jointed, and then we use that super good glue across here. Make sure it's nice and nice and clean, nice and flush. Man, this thing is going to be the highlight of my kitchen area. I'm going to say this to the vlog, I've decided that I'm going to go with either like a black or really deep gray stain. I think it's going to bounce off of the, uh, off of the backsplash really, really well and continue to, continue to make the kitchen feel like it kind of falls back or recedes and give the illusion that it is a much bigger space than, than it really is. Um, and that's, uh, that's all I got so far. So the next plan after that is to take this piece that you guys saw last night, um, glue it to the edge of this, then bring it into the van, get my sketch, cut it to size, and then finally we've still got a few extra pieces here that we'll use for that we'll use for basically where the kitchen is because the kitchen, excuse me, where the uh, the sink is because that portion bumps out to about 22 and a half inches, whereas the rest of this. Um, all we need is about 18 and a quarter. So basically just kind of putting another piece on there, um, trace it, cut it, sand it, and uh, at that point I believe it will be ready to, uh, to scribe a hole for the, the sink itself. Um, and once I have it all fitted in, it's, uh, it's stain time. For this glue to dry I went ahead and got some sandpaper and started sanding and started sanding the uh, the frame to this can you see it the frame to this thing and man there it is you can see where uh, where the screws were where is that and this is bright um, but it's coming out well I think once I sand all of the rest of this and get the uh, and get the um, the clear coat, the clear coat on there, like I did with the rest of the ceiling. The color is going to pop. I know I keep saying it in the last couple of videos, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, so I'm going to keep digging on this thing because it's taking a lot of work to make sure we're getting a very flat butcher block countertop before we even get to the sanding um, the sanding stage. Um, so I will catch up with you guys this evening. What's going on, uh, man? It's been a tough one. It's been a tough one today. Uh, at the risk of going on a rant, not a rant, but just like a bitch sesh, um, we have found about 50% success with this butcher block. We were able to cut it, to strip it, to number one, I guess, is a big one, is make it to where we had enough surface area to actually cover this entire countertop. So I'm very happy about that. Um, but the other thing is we couldn't use the, the pocket hole approach. The wood is too thin. Um, even the screws that the manual calls for, it's splitting the wood, so the wood is super brittle. Um, so I think my approach is basically going to be, I'm going to clean up here at Mark's place, I'm going to head back to my brother's house to where I have all my supplies and see if I have a big piece of like the really thin uh, plywood or maybe some hardboard, something that's already one piece that's big enough where I can cut a template out, make sure I know it fits, and then just glue this, this, um, this cork board, this cork board, this uh, butcher block to it, trim it, and then just put it in that way. And uh, I think that will be the solution. I think that's how it's going to work. Let me pick this up. This is essentially what we're looking at 
right now, guys, I gotta put this big piece, which this is a win. This is all one big piece uh, so far. <laughs> and I gotta put glue this small piece back on to this medium piece, and then um, get this thing fitted so I can cut the hole for the sink, cut the hole for the faucet, sand this thing down and stain it. And I think you guys are gonna like the way this turns out. So um, that being said, I will, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's been a full day almost, a full day almost since, uh, since I recorded anything and I've been busy and I wanna show you what I've got going on. So essentially, I, uh, me and my buddy Mark were able to break down the, as you saw, we were able to break down the butcher block and it was, it was tricky to get this thing to stick because it's just kind of heavy and with a straight seam, it was really tricky to glue that stuff up. So I ended up putting a really thin piece, I'm going to call it plywood, but it's called something else. It's like an eighth of an inch, really thin, um, but I used that underneath the entire butcher block and used 90, uh, 3M 90 strength adhesive spray to keep it all so essentially it was all together and then hit the seams as I was assembling it with the wood glue and it came out right. It was basically more than anything just easier to handle. It wasn't falling apart. Um, and as you can see, I went ahead and uh, installed the faucet looking super dope, very van life worthy. Um, cut the hole for the sink and the undermount situation is looking good. Below here I've got the uh, full strip of the floor panel and it is angled, taped, and ready for ready for some of that bed liner spray. Guys, I think this is gonna look really, really cool. Um, I'm really excited about this, uh, this part of it because in general, it's just gonna look real nice. It's gonna have this factory looking floor finish and the, uh, the black, the bed liner isn't gonna end here. It'll come all the way up to, well, you get the idea. I'm just really excited about it. Um, I'm gonna get cleaned up a little bit. I'm gonna hit the gym, run some errands, come back, and hopefully spray this bed truck liner, officially install the uh, the partition wall, and I will catch up with you guys then. Morning fam. Updates, yeah. So the plan for the day is to finish all of the paint touch-ups I need to do for I covered the um, the front of the cabinet put a handle on there did some TLC to this door because it was super damaged really messed up like it was a frustrating piece for me to put together sanded that um, added added the uh, this kind of I don't know cover piece but for right now I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of this tweed I'm not gonna cushion this part but I'm gonna take more of a tweed and I'm gonna wrap it here and then wrap it on this edge with a couple of more of those nails so now the bed space will have a nice kind of kind of frame look to it and uh, and then get out of the paint department and start throwing some color so very happy with the way this turned out man just seeing it all one color what <laughs> what a big difference so next thing I gotta do is there are some from the adjustments I made the other day there are some spots that I sanded underneath here that I need to stain ebony again and then get underneath here. I think I'm going to do one more coat on the uh, on the edge of this thing. Take a little bit more off of the top center in the spots where I put it, um, rather where I took it off. And uh, this thing's going to be uh, ready for living. It has been a very productive day. So um, I'm going to spin you guys around here real quick. I got... Um, Pretty much all of the touch-up stuff done. This one door I tried to salvage. Uh, I'm still gonna have to sort something out there, but otherwise everything looks good. I was able to stain underneath, poppy seed color on the front. Forgot to uh, put the stain under here, but I'll touch that up. Otherwise, this is looking great. Man, I love that backsplash. Hey, what's happening guys? I'm gonna try to make this quick because yesterday my Canon camera died, the battery died, and this one's about to go out. It's already blinking at me. So I wanted to show you guys real quick what I ended with. 
before I end this vlog, extremely, extremely happy with it. Basically what I ended up doing is taking more of that tweed material that I harvested from the old damaged headboard and I used it to wrap the, uh, the frame, as you saw, I used it to wrap the frame of this bed space and man, does it ever fit the vibe. I'm super, super happy with it. Um, so this one, I uh, I padded. You can see this is padded, and it's actually really comfortable to lean up against. These two, I basically just kind of double folded it um, with some nails, and then put the upholstery the upholstery nails in there. This one, I had to cut a couple pieces of wood to make it fit. Um, but man, it's uh, it's awesome. And I finished out this side of the bed space, and you can probably see I added a spot for both my um the remote for the lights remote for the lights that go up here as well as what is the other one for oh for the exhaust fan um and added a light switch for led lights that i fit along the running board top end i don't know what you call it the top end of the uh, the cabinet so that way i can access that and and i'm gonna have a remote Oh, that's dirty and I'm gonna have a remote that comes with my diesel heater so basically from inside the bed space I'll be able to control the bed LED light strip the kitchen LED light strip the fan and the heater guys I have not underestimated my need for comfort <laughs> in this build um, but also style and design so um, so that's it that's all I got for you guys I gotta get inside I gotta cook it's another beautiful day here in Central Texas. Cannot wait to be out in nature with this rig. I'll get to you guys in the next one.